Ben Sheets was yeah. a hell of a player that doesn't get talked about enough these days. Four time All Star. You and you guys saw him early in his career there in Milwaukee. Yeah, Ben was a stud. That that you know, that's a perfect segue to the stats I looked up. So I was having fun, Fig. And you'll you'll remember this series because it was right after uh, you joined us. Mm-hmm. I was telling Scott. I, I this this series I talk about all the time with people to let them understand how good Barry Bonds was at the time, how we didn't want him to beat us. And so we go into this series in, in mid-April, so real early in the year, in 02, to face San Fran. Mm-hmm. And, the, and our three starters are Sheets, Fig, Figgy, Game 2, and Ruben Coveto, uh, Game 3. And, Thanks. of course, at the beginning of the series, you say, hey, here's our scouting report. Bonds ain't beating us, right? We're not even going to throw him strikes. We're not going to let him beat us. Way too early in the year. He just hit 73 homers the year before. I looked up what he did against us, and I'll never forget because I swear to God, we probably only threw him five pitches over the plate the whole series. (laughs) And I think he hit two of them foul for homers, two homers. He had five walks in nine plate appearances and went two for four with two homers. And Figgy threw a great game, too. Figgy went six and gave up three. Sheetsy actually threw a good game. And and we won a game in that series, believe it or not. But to think yeah. about how incredible he was that we were going in there not even going to throw him a strike, and we only throw him a handful, and he still hits two homers. When people talk about, oh, the steroids this, the steroids that, and I said, listen, it, it, uh, that era, it might have been a level playing field because there were pitchers doing it as well as hitters. You still had to hit the ball, right? How many middle infielders did we see that were bulked up that still couldn't hit? Barry Bonds saw one pitch to hit maybe per game, and he didn't miss it. When I say he didn't miss it, it wasn't just a line drive somewhere. It was somebody needed to duck because a fan was going to wear it because he was that kind of special player. So when you went in there and you faced him, and I got to face him the year before, um, I remember when we went there, and it was the first time I had ever had the Barry Bond shift done, right? Because they had the big wall in right. If he hits it towards right field, there's no defense for that because it's going in the water. So we didn't even have a right fielder. We shaded him to left, and we're going to go with nothing but split fingers. I'm like, okay, so nothing but split fingers, down and away to Barry Bonds, and we're going to play that shift that way. So if he pulls it off the wall, it's a double easy no matter what. And if it's a double, I'm lucky because it didn't go into the water. And I, I dropped like four split fingers in a row. One of, it, one of them got too much plate, and he hit a missile up the right center field wall. And I, I want to replay on this because I remember someone reaching over, and they caught it like right before it would have went into the stands. But they caught it right well within the wall. And I went running towards the umpire because the umpire is signaling home run. And I'm running towards the umpire, and I go, didn't you see that guy reach over? You see? And he looks up at the – and he points to the scoreboard. And I'm like, man, that's rude. He just pointed to the scoreboard. On the scoreboard, it said, I think at the time, he passed like Mickey Mantle or somebody like that. And he goes, sorry, kid. It still counts. <laughs> <laughs> the Jeffrey Mayer situation. He, he was that impressive where uh, it didn't matter who the pitcher was. He would face these guys who, you know, a, a reliever would come out of nowhere throwing 96 miles an hour, blow a fastball by him, and then try to do it twice. You wouldn't get too past him. Isolate Night with Scott Rogowski, live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern.